friends, welcome back to our channel. If you don't know, I'm Chase. And I'm Maria Jose. About a year ago, we sold our house. And we bought a big school bus Then now it's our home and we drive around the United States. We took four months to convert it and then we hit the road and we haven't looked back since. And we want to get up close and personal with you about the reality versus the expectations that we had going into bus life because they're two very different things. So we hope you enjoy this video. We also hope that it sheds some light on what it's like to live in a small space that moves. If you're thinking of living in a school bus, an RV or a van, we hope this helps you out. If you don't live in one and you're here for the gossip, we are here to show you the reality of bus life. We've got all of the tea. Hola amiguis, we are Maria Jose and Chase. In 2018, we saw our home and moved into a 40-foot school bus with our dogs Jake and Pablo. In an effort to live our lives deliberately, we hit the road. Since then, we've met the most amazing people and we've made friends for life. Pushed the limits of our comfort zones, learned new skills, explored the unknown, and witnessed the most amazing sunsets. We invite you to subscribe and join us along this journey. Oh, goodness. No, I'm just kidding. One of the unexpected realities of bus life is also one of our favorite things, our toilet. While it's great, it's still a toilet. And where we're not hooked up to a sewer system, we do still have to maintain this. Now, from cleaning to dropping our tank, it's not the most glamorous job. And our friends who are in their vehicles, they have the job of doing this as well. Although some may be a little bit more hands-on than others. So we went with an RV toilet, which means we have a holding tank. And I always get the pleasure of draining the tank. While it's not the most hands-on process, some people don't necessarily have the stomach for it. We connect the hose to the tank, pull some levers, and there we have our number one and number two flowing. A lot of people ask us if it smells because we have our toilet and a school bus, but it doesn't unless you're driving and air gets through the pipe and when you flush, it can stink. But to her point, that's not nearly as bad as when I have cauliflower tacos. So this might be some of yours absolute worst nightmare. We've got our poo hose, lovingly named the poo hose. We have to drain our tanks. We have a gray water tank and we have a black water tank, as we mentioned because of our RV style toilet. Now the reality of this is it's really not that bad. I hook my hose up here, take my cap off, and I pull my handle. Some people are absolutely disgusted by this. I can understand why this would be one of your absolute least favorite things to consider in bus life. And for me, this beats the heck out of scrubbing out a composting toilet or emptying a urine diverter. So I don't have to see it, I don't have to deal with it, it goes into a waste management facility, done and done. We found RV dump stations that were free a lot easier and more frequently than we found places to fill up our water tanks. Showers. When we planned our bus, we decided to have a full-size shower because it was important for us. In my mind, a shower a day, probably. Ha! Reality is, probably once or twice a week, you have to actually plan your showers. Because we only have a 100-gallon water tank. That might be a lot for a lot of people, but when you have two dogs and two people, they need to use the bathroom, drink water, shower, clean. It's not that much. If you have seen some cool pictures on Instagram of people living in their vehicle, the truth is they probably haven't showered in a couple of days, including us. We sold our house. What more maintenance could we have? The reality of it, there's a ton of maintenance to do in a vehicle. 
not just the engine, all the other mechanical parts of it, the electrical systems of it, but also everything that we added to it. Our house moves around with us and our house is pretty heavy. It might not be as heavy as our old house was, but we're always fixing something that we've broken that's breaking or trying to maintain things so they don't break. Well, we drive our home, we tow our vehicle, so we have routine maintenance on the Jeep. We just replaced universal joints on the Jeep. We've got to do an oil maintenance on the bus and a fuel filter maintenance on the bus. And on top of all of that, we just completely renovated the inside of our bus from things that we broke going down the road. If it's not the pipes and the drains, something to do with the water system. If it's not the water system, it's something to do with the electrical system. And if both of those things are doing well, well, it's probably something that you've built and put in it. So our expectation of bus life is once we were finished building, we were done. Done. It was the final, it was the finale. We had nothing else to do. And what we found since we hit the road is we're constantly fixing drawers and cabinets and trim pieces and paint. The paint is never ending. And well, the next thing on the list, we've got to install some outdoor lights. I've got to repair some cushions. The list goes on and on and on. And the second that you think that it's fixed, something else pops up. Before leaving in the bus, we never thought of how much water we use. Now that we have only a hundred gallon water tank, we try to save as much water as possible. That means taking fewer showers, that means washing dishes with just a tiny little bit of water, brushing our teeth really quickly, and just being smart about it. Sometimes it's very hard to find a place to fill up your water. That's why you have to plan. Sometimes it could be free, but most of the time you have to pay and drive to go and get water. Before hitting the road, we never imagined it was going to be kind of difficult to find some fresh water. If you think about it, we could ask people, but it's kind of weird being like, Hey, can we have a little bit of your water? Our tank is a hundred gallon tank. So it's kind of weird. Sometimes you can fill it for free, but it's very weird. The reality of water on the road, it's kind of bad. You can totally run out of water before you find a place where you can fill up. However, if your vehicle is smaller than ours and you don't have a big water tank, finding water could be quite easy. We have friends with smaller vehicles and small tanks that can just go and buy water and get it by the jug. Expectation. 40 feet of bus, 35 feet of livable space. It's awesome, right? When you're downsizing. Reality, 40 feet of bus is a whole heck of a lot to lug around. You have to be very specific in planning. You have to be very specific in finding places to park. And worst of all is no matter how much you search, sometimes you just can't make it, regardless of if I Overlander tells you that you can. Parking the bus also comes with great responsibility. And that goes into just as much planning and preparation. We thought in the very early stages 40 feet was going to be a bit cramped for us, and we found that a much smaller vehicle would be much more manageable for us. We can't fit in standard parking spaces. We almost can't fit into RV spaces when we're towing our Jeep. And a lot of places that we see cars parked on the side of the road, we would love to be able to do that, but we can't. We found ourselves in cities where oversized vehicles, which, no surprise, we're an oversized vehicle, are just totally not allowed to park on the side of the road at all. Another thing that comes along with having a large vehicle, there are parts of the country where the highways are designed for motorists and small vehicles and trucks, and that's it. And we found that out the hard way by following GPS. Thanks, Connecticut. When you buy a big vehicle and you build it out as deliberately as we have, you just deal with it. And we're a lot more thoughtful in the ways that we plan and we prep. That way we can avoid some of the parking mishaps. And let me tell you, we really love BLM land. This goes hand in hand with what Chase was saying, parking and the size of our vehicle. Our home, it's a bus. So we have been involved with the police and we have get tickets because there are places where we're not allowed to park. We have get only one ticket in San Diego and we have also been knocked on the door like a couple times by the police. They have been very nice, but we have to move. And sometimes you're having a great night's sleep and then you get your door knock on. So what do you do? Wake up 
and move the bus. Everything we own, it's with us at all time, which is a great thing if you think about it because that means when we're traveling, I don't forget anything. But there's a downside for it. When we're in the bus and we're parked somewhere, we keep an eye on everything inside the bus and try to look for safety. But if we're taking a day trip on the Jeep and going to explore or going for walks or hikes, whatever, we really don't know what's happening where we leave the bus. So we try to be a little bit careful of where we park and who we park with, but there's not much you can do. We just try our best to be as safe as possible. When we post a video, we try to always post two weeks behind of where we are traveling at the moment. For your own safety and for our own safety. There could be some people that don't have very good intentions. So we try to keep it as safe as possible. Also, Pablo is an ankle biter. So we are looking out for the people so he doesn't attack you. So Chase, you've said that you only average like eight to nine miles per gallon diesel when you're driving your land well, right? So that sucks. I bet you guys waste a ton of money on fuel. Reality? Most of the places that we go, we park and we stay there for two to four weeks, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. But the average is close to a month in each location. So, we're really only spending money on fuel on our way to a place, not necessarily around the place. That's why we have the Jeep. And while the Jeep isn't the most fuel efficient thing, we're still getting somewhere around 16 to 17 miles per gallon with it. So, all of that being said, what we pay for fuel between both vehicles in a month, it beats the heck out of our mortgage, probably out of your rent, out of any of the utilities that we've ever paid, probably out of your utilities as well. So, all in all, we're pretty okay with it. Cheers. Mm. Cold drinks, perfect for this hot weather. That reminds me, air conditioner. We talk about it a lot when we were building the bus. I want an air conditioner. Chase was okay without an air conditioner. The reality is you need crazy amount of power to have an air conditioner run for a couple hours, for a little bit. And the reality is that some of our friends, they actually have them. The only way that they can use it is if they're connected to shore power, like in a campground. And we're not doing that all the time. So air conditioner for us was a pass. And when we decided to pass on the air conditioner, our plans were just following good weather. So not too hot, not too cold. But the truth is, we cannot control the weather. So... Sometimes it's pretty hot and you just need to open all your windows, drink a cold beverage, or go outside. Missing friends. That's something else that we thought, well, while we're driving, we're probably going to go and visit a lot of our friends. Or we're going to get a lot of people come and stay with us. The reality, at the moment, we have zero people staying with us. Zero people have visited us. We have drive to go and see family and friends. But sometimes you get homesick, homesick. But we also have met a lot of cool people that now we call family on the road, friends on the road. It could be the good thing that we all could drive and meet back, but we all have different plans of where to go, places to visit. We wish we could spend more time with people sometimes. The good thing is that we can drive and meet back up. Expectation. You live in a school bus. It's cool. You've got a nice YouTube. You have a great Instagram. Reality. Everyone thinks you're a hippie. Just because we like incense, we burn Palo Santo, we might be musically and artistically inclined. No, I'm kidding. But everywhere you go, people think that you're a hippie. 
We drive by, we have the windows open, and sometimes we'll pass cars and hear them shout, Hippie Bus! And the reality of it is, we're just normal people who didn't want to wait until we were so old that we couldn't enjoy our bodies and hopefully get a pension. We're not hippies. We might care a little bit more about the environment than your next door neighbor, but that doesn't make us hippies. Not that there's anything wrong with hippies, or anybody else for that matter. Expect to be called a hippie for living in a bus or living in a vehicle while you're traveling around the United States or the world. Another thing is while we travel with our home, we live in our home, and we sold our other home, which was a house, to do this, people still assume somehow that we're homeless, we're bums, we're leeching off of society. And in reality, we're doing this because we want to live an alternative lifestyle and live a little bit more deliberately to get out and enjoy and see things that most people only get a couple of weeks, if even a couple of weeks, every year to go and do. So while it may be one big vacation for us, it's not easy. And we're not homeless. And we are working a lot of hours to make sure that this is a sustainable lifestyle for us. We have a front engine bus and it can get pretty noisy. It's kind of hard to communicate between us while we're driving. So what I normally do, get editing done, listen to some music, watch a show, while Chase just drives. A lot of people have commented that having a front engine bus maybe be a little bit annoying and take a little bit of your space. But personally, we prefer having it in the front. We're able to listen to it while we're driving. If something were to go wrong, we should be able to hear before it got too bad. Living in a small space with the weather as it is. One day it's raining, one day it's snowing, one day it's super shiny, one day it's all of those and more. And if you follow along with us, you know the bad weather follow us. It's true. And we're confined to more or less 250 square feet. And we're confined to and we're confined to more or less 250 square feet for the two of us and our dogs. And while it is a small space, it feels a whole lot smaller when we can't go outside. When it's super rainy and all you can do is stay inside. And when you have to walk the dogs in that because they have to have their time outside as well. Muddy. And then you bring that right back in. Sometimes really hot weather makes you get out and do things, which is good, but we cannot plan and we cannot manage the weather. So we just make the best out of it. We have thermal curtains, so if it's a super hot day, we can open the windows. We can keep the heat out while letting the breeze in. On super cold days, we drop them and we light a fire. Really rainy days, well, those are nice for the most part. Well, we're trying to sleep, probably. Yeah. These roofs are amazing for sleeping or napping in the rain. The reality is, sometimes in a space like this, you can feel cabin fever. There's no doubt about it. It's a small space, and sometimes you just don't want to get out. But the beauty of it is, when you find great weather, you can get out and explore anything you want, and your home can take you to that. You can have those beautiful environments and that beautiful weather at your doorstep. It's as easy as turn on your bus and drive that direction. Well, friends, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed this video. We also hope that you enjoyed us getting up close and personal with you about some of the realities of living in a bus. If you're new to our channel, please make sure to subscribe. If you're all to our channel, please give us a like and leave us a comment down below. I'm excited to tell you that starting next week, we're gonna be posting videos not interrupting our normal Thursday and Sunday schedule, but in addition to uh, those, we'll be posting videos of Marose's Makeup on the Move. We hope you have enjoyed today's video. We'll see you on Sunday. Love you guys. Bye!